and I want this whole back wall to be like amazing, outrageously affordable. Did you hear that? Amazing, outrageously affordable built-in cabinetry. This is a cabinetry. So real cabinetry costs heaps of money. Right. So I want to use a hack. I want to have prefab like flat pack cabinetry and then I want you guys to miracle it up so it looks integrated. Like I want to skirt around yep. it and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I got this from Hikea. Mm -hmm. There's four of them. And so they'll fit all the way across that wall and depending on the height of this a little bit because our skirts, oh no, our skirts 130, depending on the height of that we might just be able to skirt right up to the bottom of the drawer. Yep, that's a good idea. Thanks. You came and, up with that idea. I don't know. And then we might be able to, I don't know how you guys will do it, I'm leaving that one to you, putting something between them so there's no gaps. Yep. And then I want you guys to use your amazingness because the cabinets are only that tall. So I then want you guys to use your amazingness and build in some open shelving up to picture rail. Is that cool? Yep. Okay. Do that. Does it come pre-painted? Yeah. Okay. It comes pre-everything. Right. needs to be perfectly square when it's made in a room that was built over a hundred years ago with a water level and not exactly the best. So I'm sensing that you are challenged by my decision to do this cabinetry. Your name was in that bucket with that plaster mud for a little while. <laughs> really? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Look, we can get Regan in here and tell the real no, story. No, let's not get Regan in here to tell the real <laughs> story. I look, I get, um, I know you get my idea of doing this. Well, you know, without making it answer, well, this was a good idea. <gasps> Say that again <laughs> for the camera. Go on. Go on. Without making your head swell, this was a good idea. So what was the biggest challenge with it then? I get that we had really tight walls and you didn't know whether you'd get the four in but we did <laughs> and i understand that the walls aren't straight no they're not well, look one of the challenges was when we you your idea not that idea uh you wanted to put these cabinets in here we were very very limited in yeah the width the yeah. length like down to Five some mil. overhauls of what we put on walls. Yeah, we did have to keep the walls skinny. We got to do the in-trim down both sides. So it fitted well. But I'm sensing that 
we're not quite done because it's been square set, right? That's right. And we've got exposed trims here and we're going to need to do something here. Hey, I really want to do something there. Well, a yep. couple of things to consider is when we do this, we've got a gap here of about 19 mil, but down the bottom on the top of the in trim, we've only got about five mil. Ooh. So our thickness would be better if it was um, quite skinny. Yeah. So then it doesn't take away from your skirting. No, because it's beautiful. Or then we have to put a block at the bottom here where your this trim would run in. Yeah. To it, and the skirting would run in each side. So you're talking about for the dummies like me at times when I'm being vague. Um, you're talking about if we strip here, it's going to hit the top of my skirt. And what does that look like? Yes, yeah. Cool. And I guess this is one of the things that I talk about in Renault's all the time, but you guys just do it innately, is that everything touches something else. That's right. And you've always got to think, everything you apply to anywhere, you've got to go, what is it going to touch? What is it going to connect with? How's that going to work? Mm -hmm. And so it's easy for me to go, Ferris, put a trim on here for me. And you're like, cool, what does it look like at the top? What does yep. it look like at the bottom? And how's it going to stay there? Yep. So the other thing to consider is if we actually open this door, it's just checking these are going to fold back in. Yes, they, they should do. clear. And on here, this is the other thing. So we've got the picture rail that go. goes all the way at the top. We're going to make that look hot. So my thoughts here yep. is that you could possibly do a bit of a crown mold. I don't know what a crown mold is. You don't know what a crown mold is? I don't know what a crown mold is. All right, let's play with crowns. Right. Well, I am a princess, right? Correct. Careful. <laughs> right. This, if you put this here, obviously this is quite large, but for example, you would have what's called a crown mold on here. So you would overhang this and it'll look pretty and How high would it be? Easy. Well, we'd have to see what the in trim uh, products come in. Okay. But I know they probably would have a crown mold. Okay. Um, so it sits out like a picture rail. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But it would only be ditty. Yeah, it would be quite. So if we broke, if we cut that in half, kind of thing, that's what it would look like. That could be cute. Thing. Where else would you use a crown mold? Uh, across the top of cupboards. So say if you had a very decorative ceiling and corners. Yes. And you wanted to put in a built-in in an old house. Yes. Right. You don't want just a box in the corner. No. Do you? Is that kind of like when you could run your picture rail around it, but if you yeah. don't have rails, you yeah. run a crown mold? Yes, that's right. I know what you're talking about now. Oh, it sticks out. Yes. I know what you mean. Good. It's the part that goes out like that rather than yes. in like that. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> right, that okay. was a really long story. That was a really long story. So, so we could you, use your options there. are doing a piece of trim across here. You do a little crown mold or just a flat trim. You do a trim that's similar to what we do here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There. Uh, you're having a shelf in the middle? Yeah. You're building a shelf in the middle. Good. <laughs> do you want a ladder? Yes. I do want a ladder. Okay. <gasps> could we? Yes. We totally could. We could totally, could we totally like run a rail and have a ladder and, yeah. and it runs along it. But we've got lights coming out the top top. So you would have to bring out the middle ladder. So say on oh, the middle shelf. Top sides. Ladder idea. Ladder um, idea. At first thought, first yes. run. From there, you would have a rail on there that the ladder would hook onto and run on yep. from side to side. So it would be sort of like this kind of. Yes. But that's going to be eating up a bit of room in here. It is, hey. So what's more important? A nice ladder to get to your top shelf or whatever's playing for here. You should know by now that I get pretty much everything I want. And so I want circulation space and I want a ladder. 
So, could that mean you could make me the rail that goes up there? Right. And I could make a ladder out of a vintage ladder with beautiful brass hooks that could actually have a home position on the wall. That's not a bad idea. I like that idea. Do you like that idea? I do. Because I'm not going to be getting up there much, let's yeah. face it. Like, yeah, I won't be getting up there much. Most of my work in this room will be in the drawers. And on the beautiful, can you see it? There's a beautiful, big, custom-made design bench right here. It's actually the pile of dirt right there, right now. <laughs> but can you see it? I've got it. And you're going to make it? <laughs> actually, do you know what? You're going to teach me how to make it. Oh, God. Okay, so what I'm thinking is in here, timber frame. Like a, like a little wall, yep. put it in there. Right, and we we screw it to the back here. Yep. What have we got behind here? And studs. Studs. So that'll take it. One thing. Ikea hacks all over the internet mm. um, and this certainly is a very cool Ikea hack yeah. very cool you must admit not bad not bad at all it was good right it was good compared to how much would this cabinetry it, have it's cost worked you? well it's worked well yeah god that was hard to get that out of here it has worked well it has yes I'll, I'll pay you this one you've, you've just, done extreme just one you've done well we added a picture rail here Yes. Is it a full picture though, or did he no, cut and sand we custom that? Made, yeah, we custom made this one. I wonder what was going on. And the same with this one. To give us a crown. The crown mold. I pay attention. Okay, so talk to your builder, buy it, put it together, put it in, do your tr first lot of trims. Can I just point out, oh. don't buy it and then talk to your builder like you oh, did. Really? You did say that, right? Like, talk to your builder, buy it. Oh, are you just correcting me? <laughs> talk to your builder, buy it, um, build it, install it. To install it, and then frame around it. Carpenters and plasterers need to work together on okay. this one. I a think big that's part a big of thing, the, isn't the it? chip rockers and, and the carpenters working together. And see, that's where I think, even though it does not look super special right now, that's where I think this one's going to turn out next level because the plasterers and chippies work together. It's not, you know, there's not going to be um, a section of it that isn't corniced or where there's dust mites or where there's, you know, I just think it's going to be really streamlined because you guys chatted. So one of the things that come to mind with this project is the ability that most designers that you know, following you or watch you yeah. have a vision of what it's going to look like. We do have lots now, of visions. Hey? Carpenters and plasterers are very uh, hands-on, yep. uh, and they like to see and touch what they've got to do. So you trying to explain this at the start to the plasterers and, and the carpenters was this isn't going to work, and you know that they said but it's not going to fit. So it there needed to be a bit of a collaboration with your builder or your person that's yeah, sort of totally. in charge here saying and pepping them up saying no we can make it work and we'll just do this then coming to okay let's not discuss too far ahead about these shelves and getting this in getting it built and then we discuss the plan forward for this yeah. so one of the things that i'd say or recommend being a designer is not to dish out too much of your vision in detail and just say, look, can we get to this part here, boys? And even if you did have a vision Are you of saying this, that I have to drip feed my ideas to you guys? Look, it's it's easier... Look, it's easier to 
retain and there's no slowing down of the job. It's just a matter of goal set, get this in and make sure it's it's in and done and, and do then you, come back. Do you know what? I'm actually really proud of you, Ferris, because that statement... Well, thanks, Mum. No worries. <laughs> I'm not that old. I am older, but seriously. Because that, I guess, just like we're talking about um, Plaster and Chippy, that's how I truly believe that designers and trades should work. It shouldn't be a, here's my design, go away and make it. It should be a collaborative thing, especially in renovations, because things happen. They do. Things happen a lot. And they happen all the time, and you have to duck and weave and turn and twist, and mm. and that's why I think the whole, you know, sometimes the model between designer and builder has been I specify the vision and you make it happen. Whereas I don't think that works as well as working together. Well, one of the things you've got to consider there is we're here to make your vision come true. Okay, so we're we're whilst we can see a lot of people's visions and we need to make them happen, yeah. we're here for your vision. Oh, so thanks. some of the things that you, know, you want to consider when you're working with a builder or a carpenter is that you know, they're following your vision. Uh, might not necessarily be the same taste as what they would have, but yeah. you want your result to come out the way you want it. Yeah, I do. I'm fine for that. What I need to do next is bring in another wallpaper. I found a beautiful botanical wallpaper that is in a monochrome, but it's a really gentle charcoal. And I'm going to be using that in conjunction with the grass cloth to really dress up the hack shelving. joining me. Did you know I wrote a book all about creating wealth through renovating property? I've popped a link below in the description so you can check it out. See you next time and enjoy.